today on the 700 Club Canada. I went in basically dead, a dead person with skin and bones, and the Lord was transforming me this 13 months. I graduated at 135 pounds. I had finally completed something in my life, and God had given me a new start. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Lori Hartsarn. And I'm Brian Warren. Thank you for joining us. Well, we all know, Brian, that life can be confusing at best, mm -hmm. and any one of us can lose our way. And on today's show, you see that no matter what you've done, no matter how far off course life may seem, there is always an opportunity to get back on track. There's always an opportunity. You'll meet Juan, a former drug dealer turned pastor whose praying mother probably saved his life. Got a question for you. Yeah. Do you know or do you have a story of a lost sheep, lost his way, came back? Absolutely. I would say I was one. Okay. I Pray mean, tell. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. Yeah. Right? We can't, we're, we're all wanderers. Yeah. And I would say, even though I don't, I don't have like the, you know, I did drugs and all the party and all, I don't have that story. Okay. But I know in my own heart, I was rebellious and independent of God for quite a few years in my life, mm -hmm. doing the church thing, doing the Christian thing, but not really in love with Jesus mm. and not really following my good shepherd. Mm. You know, it, it's interesting. I think that we all recognize that. And I've noticed um, in the last month, I mean, especially this year, there seems to be a resurgence of people saying, I want to get right with God. Yeah. I want to come back yeah. and I want to know him. Um, my own personal journey was, uh, you know, uh, I was a cradle Christian. Mom had a relationship, dad had a relationship, but I had to develop my own personal relationship right. because uh, yeah. it wasn't enough to just go on a mom's praying. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that can be true of many watching that, you know, yeah. maybe you're following Jesus because your parents had, but mm -hmm. you know, if you or someone you know is feeling lost, We'll have some hope to go and to help you find your way back a bit later in the show. And we meet, we'll meet a former pastor's daughter who went from the model child to having 17 warrants out for her arrest. Wow, but first, to see what took it to get Juan to put his drug dealing days behind him. Take a look. In the morning, shake your sleep. In the morning, Shake your feet, I'm gonna come. Everywhere I went, I, I destroyed homes, business owners, lawyers, dentists, and I thought I did it best. Juan Martinez, an ambitious drug dealer, grew up willing to do anything to feel accepted and prove himself. Parents got divorced when I was like eight years old, um, so I really didn't have a father figure per se. I was looking at outside and what was in movies, and I thought that the toughest guy out there and the guy that had the most money and the most women, that that was really the picture of what a guy was like. Juan started hanging out with the older kids in his New Jersey neighborhood. They introduced him to drugs, and by 13, he was using and selling marijuana and cocaine. I felt accepted by these guys. They taught me what they knew. They taught me their trade. So I'm thinking, okay, if this is what I need to do, then I had to top everybody. And so that's who I became. Years later, Juan moved to Texas to expand his territory and was introduced to meth. He started using it and then selling it with one goal in mind. I wanted to make a lot of money. I was gonna come here, I was gonna do the big score, and I was gonna be the, one of the main distributors in New York City and New Jersey and all those other states. Juan began by targeting families in the suburbs. His strategy was to first befriend the fathers. I know they were drinkers and we'd drink and eventually, uh, you know, hey, you wanna get high and get the guy high. And once I got the guy high, that was easy because now I'm invited into his home. Once Juan got both husband and wife hooked, he became their dealer and moved on to the next home. I felt I was proving myself to everybody finally. And it was this weird world, this prideful, weird world that uh, made me feel like, yeah, I was accomplishing something in life. As long as Juan stayed high, he didn't have to think about what he was doing. I didn't think that the things that I was doing were bad. 
And if you don't think you're doing anything wrong, you just begin to chase after something that really will never satisfy you, but you chase after it anyway. One day, Juan was out on a delivery when he heard a voice he didn't recognize. I'm hearing, why are you killing, stealing, and destroying the very lives I'm giving people? For the first time in my life, I felt horrible. I am just weeping and crying, right? And then it's like, in a twinkling of an eye, everything stops. I still went and made my deliveries, but there was a thought every time I handed it to somebody, you know? So I would hand it to a woman, and I was thinking, man, I'm ruining her life. I would hand it to a guy, man, I'm ruining their life. Juan had gone to church as a child and believed the voice was God's, but didn't know how to change. A short time later, he was arrested for meth possession and landed in jail, facing a 25-year sentence. I've hit rock bottom, nowhere else to go, I'm done. Uh, I'm, I'm at a place now where um, I don't have anybody. One night, encouraged by a cellmate, Juan prayed and read the Bible. Weeping, I got on my knees. I am repenting about everything. I'm literally going to the T and thinking about things that I have done in my life. I was like, I'm sorry. God, I want you in my life. I want this Jesus, you know, I, I want this. Juan surrendered his life to Christ and lost all desire for drugs. I didn't feel like I had to prove anything anymore. I felt like uh, I was accepted, loved. I just felt this love. Something happened. Uh, I was never the same again. Juan's sentence was reduced to four years, and he spent his time in prison growing in his faith. Today, he is married and has a family, and as a pastor, goes back to the very neighborhoods he dealt drugs and shares the gospel. Jesus filled every void. When I didn't have a father, he, he was my father. Whatever void it is that has you empty, you can fill that void with Jesus. Jesus wants to give you life. Wow, all of that because Juan wanted to be accepted. Right. That he became a weapon and he was weaponized. He, he had no guilt mm -hmm. and no shame with hurting people. And you know, that is often the, the doorway or the entryway into our need for acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I know that that was true of my middle son, Curtis. His testimony would be that, you know, he wanted to be accepted in the crowd. And, and maybe you're that person today that you just want to be accepted and loved mm -hmm. on. And so you found yourself in the wrong group of friends. Can I tell you that Jesus loves you, that it doesn't matter what you have done, that he fully accepts you. Mm -hmm. He accepts you because he loves you, not, no matter what you've done, right? Good or bad. The scriptures tell us that if we confess our sins, he is able and he is just, and he will forgive us our sins and set us free. He will give us a life that is full to the abundance. Can I invite you now to accept Christ? Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's someone out there that needs a new beginning. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for open hearts that they would receive your love and acceptance today. Uh, pray this prayer with me. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness for my sin. Thank you for your forgiveness Come for my sin. into my heart and life. Come into my heart and life. And give me a new life. And give me a new life. Amen. In we Jesus want you to call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. And we want to give you this resource, A New Day, because it is a new day when you follow Jesus. Hey, call that number now. He fills the void. Up next, the preacher's daughter is sentenced to 40 years in prison. See what happened and we return. Janie Burkett was raised in a quiet town in Oklahoma. She was a pastor's daughter with a happy childhood and loving family. We had a great church, you know. I knew that 
that there was something great that I was going to do for God, you know. I love Jesus so much. But when Janie was 10 years old, her parents separated. We were busy, busy with God. They were busy helping other people, but they forgot about themselves. The, the vision that I had of God began to switch, that He's a judgmental God. The vision of God was, if you're a loving God, then why do you let such bad things happen to good people? A few months later, Janie's parents reconciled. They decided to travel full-time as evangelists, but Janie hated her new life on the road. My childhood from that point was hard because everything that I had known was crumbling. I began to comfort eat. It was the one thing that would be there when everybody else left. I was 200 pounds at 15, 16 years old. At the age of 15, while her parents were preaching at a revival, Janie was raped by a boy her age. For years, she kept it a secret. For a long time, I took the blame of it, that it's my fault. And I hated myself, so I mean, I was raped when I was fat, as I would say. I just wanted to get rid of it, you know, just, just get rid of it. And, and so I think that's where most of the bulimia started. After five years on the road, Janie's family settled down in a small Texas town. Janie plunged into the party life. I began to get in with the wrong crowd. And then when I took my first hit of cocaine at 17 is when it was like over the top. The whole insecurity faded. And this is what caught me with the drugs is because it completely took away the reality of what I thought about myself. But as soon as the high faded off, the insecurity came right back. So I was hooked. My first hit, I was hooked. While her drug use was rising, Janie's weight was plummeting. When I would look in the mirror and I was at 110 pounds, I was like, I gotta get thinner. I mean, the only way I'm gonna be loved is if I'm really, 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 really thin. And the more dope I can do, the more thinner I can get. The more I throw up, the thinner I can get. Soon, Janie found a new way to take drugs, the needle. I had like a $300 a day or a $400 a day habit. So then you start selling dope, then you start doing forgery, then you start doing organized crime. It wasn't a party life anymore, it was a way of survival. Janie's family was grieved over her addictions, but their efforts to pull her out were futile. And they would, they would try to do as much as they could to pour Jesus into me the time that I would be home. And they would put on Christian worship music, you know, when I would come home, and I would come home and I would clean up for a day, and here I go again. But I can remember my dad just tears pouring down his face as I would leave because he would know he wouldn't see me again for months. By the age of 22, she was a high-profile drug dealer with 17 warrants out for her arrest. They had set my bond at $1.5 million. Like $1.5 million. Janie eventually served 18 months of a five-year prison sentence. But less than a year after her release, she violated her probation with alcohol and drug use. On December the 18th was my hearing for, for me to go in front of the judge. She looked at me through her glasses and she said, I'm confining Ms. Burkett to the Texas Department of Corrections for 40 years. I thought about when it's time to get married, I'm gonna be in prison. When it's time to have kids and watch them grow up, I'm gonna be in prison. 24 years old, completely broken, 90-something pounds, alcoholic, drug addict. I had no life left before me. I was transferred back to the Women's State Prison to serve out my 40 years. But I remember looking out the window, seeing all that, that was before me. It was just me and Jesus, me and the Savior who died for me. And I said, God, I have made a mess out of my life. If you can take this broken person and make something good out of it, then do it. And I ask you, Lord, that if it be your will, would you please overturn the sentence? But if not, then give me grace to accept the fact that this is where I will spend most of my life and give me peace and love to do it. And I begin to read my Bible. And I began to pray. My anger began to break and my hate began to break and, and the love of God began to flow through me. At the same time Janie and her parents were praying for a miracle, the judge who sentenced her resigned and a new judge took the bench. 
Soon after, Janie received a letter from her mother. And it said, yay! We have, we got a new trial, meaning like in big letters, and it said the new judge is gonna hear your case. Janie asked the new judge to send her to a Christian rehab program called Teen Challenge. She said, if I could give you a 60-year prison sentence and probate it, I would, because what you did was, was wrong and unacceptable with this court, you know. She said, however, that would not be merciful, nor would it be compassionate. She said, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probate that sentence, that you go to the Teen Challenge program, you complete the program, and you make something of yourself. I saw a God that day that loved me, not a judgmental God, not a God that's gonna throw you away because you're worthless, but a God who makes broken things new. I saw a God who loved me more than I loved myself. Janie left for Teen Challenge. I went in basically dead, a dead person with skin and bones, and the Lord was transforming me this 13 months. I graduated at 135 pounds. I had finally completed something in my life, and God had given me a new start. And I looked in the mirror and I saw somebody completely different. I saw my hair was fuller and my eyes were beautiful. I didn't see fat anymore. I saw who God saw. Today, Janie is drug-free and is completely reconciled with her family. She is also a full-time speaker and has written a book called Unshackled. There's no drug that's too big for God. There's no prison that's too big for God. Give your life to Jesus because it will be the best decision that you've ever made in your life. Just try Jesus. Don't let him be your last shot. You know, try him and see what a difference he can make in your life. You know, this is a powerful story. Janie was actually raised in a, in a home where she loved Jesus as a child, but because of the brokenness that happened in her family's marriage and their family being broken, she just went down such a destructive path and at times felt that she could never come back. And you know, I love what she said when she said, um, I saw that God loved me. He's not a judgmental God not a God that's going to throw you away because you're worthless, but a God that makes broken things new. I saw a God who loved me more than I loved myself. I want you to hear that today. What Janie confronted was a loving God, not a God who was angry at her. And when God sees you and, and your brokenness, he never sees, uh, no sin is too much for God to bear. He sees who he made you to be, and he wants you to be free to be all that God created you to be. Like he adores you and he loves you and he loves even the broken parts of you. God can put all those pieces back together. I want you to call us if you feel like you need freedom, that there's been such brokenness in your life, that maybe you've gone down such a path that you think there's no way back. Jesus is the way back. Jesus will bring you home. Call us at 1-855-759-0700. And we have this resource for you free indeed. And as I looked at this resource, and I was, it's just got incredible insights into what scripture says about how you can walk free and whole and how God takes broken things, broken places in our life, and he makes us new. Let me pray for you today. Well, Father, I lift up yeah, actually, I believe it's a um, young man that's listening right now, and he feels he's gone too far. Jesus, I want you to just tell him in your graciousness how much you love him, that you forgive him. He could never outrun you because you are with him in his running. You're right with him. So I pray even now that he would stop his running, turn and look full in your face, and know that you say, I love you. You're my son. I want you back. I pray for freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, up next, Brian returns with hope to go for anyone looking to break free. When God of all the world says, bless you, think what it means. You see, God Almighty is a God of blessing. That's what we find in the Bible all the way through. He said, and I will bless you. He wants to bless us. But how do you get that blessing? If you want blessing, there's only one way to get it. 
Miraculous Blessings, available now. Welcome to this Hope to Go. Today I want to talk to you about breaking free from the past. You know, Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4 is an amazing portion of Scripture. And it tells us Almighty God has an amazing plan for your life. But the first step is to make you new. In short, we don't have to be like what we've always been. We can break free and leave the past behind. Now, if you know where to look, the impossible becomes possible. So I want to give you some ABCs, breaking free from the past. A, change your focus. Instead of focusing on your problem, focus on God's promises. Listen to Colossians 3.1. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now, this is our position, but we must take hold of these truths on a daily basis in order to break free from the past. And B, you got to engage your heart. That's why the Apostle Paul writes, set your heart on things above. You see, the heart is the starting point. It's critical. It's critical key in everything that we do because everything originates in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Whatever happens in the heart will affect your entire life. Now, if we truly set our heart on the things above, we'll experience power and freedom here on the earth. Now, the word set means to seek something out with a desire to possess it. Jesus put it this way way in Matthew 6, 21. For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, if your focus is on the things that will eventually rust, break down, burn up, it's misplaced. Jesus gives us the key in Matthew 6, 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all will be added to it. The imperative is to set our hearts on the things above. To break free from the past, number three, and the final is C, you got to renew your mind. Set our minds on the things above, not on the things on the earth. Now, this is literally translated, keep on thinking as a matter of habit on things above, not on the things on the earth. Our thoughts influence our actions. So if we place our thoughts above and not on the earth, our behavior will reflect those things that matter to God. The wisest man on the earth, Solomon, in Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man, as a woman thinketh in their heart, so is he, so is she. If we purposely and by intentionality change our mind, God will change our heart. By how, but how do we do that? You ask a good question. Now, this is it. You got to hear this one. We need to battle between the ears by focusing on those things that are spelled out in Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think on these things. By seeking what Christ desires, we have the power to break our obsession with people, pleasure, and the accumulation of things. God believes in you so much more than you believe in yourself. And it's go time, baby. Today, break free from the past. Leave it behind in Jesus' name. And that's your hope to go. Do you know where your favorite holiday traditions come from? Christmas, the story behind the traditions, takes you around the world to discover the history of Christmas and the meaning behind the traditions that you love to celebrate. People have suggested that the date of Christmas, December 25th, was chosen because there were pagan feasts that happened every December around the time of the winter solstice. It's a familiar holiday complaint. Christmas today is too commercial. But the tradition of Christmas shopping is more than a thousand years old. For a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you this DVD as well as a CD copy of the timeless classic, A Christmas Carol, read by Pat Robertson. It's our gift to you for blessing others with your gift this holiday season. Dashing through the snow on a one-horse open sleigh. What's your favorite thing at Christmas, Brian? Oh, see, I thought you were gonna pick that up. You didn't even you pick know? it up. No. When, when is it an ex when is it an acceptable time to play Christmas songs? Right, right like definitely now, December. Do you is, have a Christmas tree? Is, is that a is that a protocol? Yeah. Well, I put my tree up at the beginning of December, but some are really early. 
Yeah. Do you have a Christmas tree? Do I have to yeah. answer? Yeah. Well, you know, there's some, actually, there's some interesting questions in this series, and, and the only right? Way, the only reason I say this, because after being married, I, I know you could either be right or you could be happy. Okay. I choose to be happy. Okay. And because it's our anniversary, my wife loves to go right. away. Well, I think she's a good woman. Yeah. So, so I may have a Christmas palm tree. Right. <laughs> That's right. fine. Is that okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. So let's let's test you because okay. you, you're the traditional, and you really. I'm married yeah. to the traditional. Oh, okay. I have no choice. See. All right, All right. now, um, what did the uh, the the wise men bring Jesus? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. No, I think it was Chanel. You think? Well, I can tell you right now that I use frankincense or like on my face. Yeah. It's true. It's amazing. It's amazing. I now know why Jesus was given frankincense. I'm it just heals joking. everything. I'm just joking. I think it was. It, it is frankincense. I know yeah. it is. But yeah. you know what? I, I was thinking that popular, popular television would probably say it's it's the uh, the best fragrance at the well, time. Well, that right. that could be true. I'm loving this series. You have been to Bethlehem. You've actually witnessed the place of Jesus. Well, birth, the beautiful or... thing, the, the beautiful thing about being in the Holy Land at Christmas time is you get a complete different perspective mm. because we in North America we see something from a sort of a, uh, a marketing perspective, right, right. but we've got something that's going to help you understand yeah. the traditions and how they really got started yeah. and why Martin Luther and a number of others and why the 25th and why we celebrate the way we celebrate. And why we have trees. That's and, right. And yeah. it's going to give meaning to that as well. That's right. And all you have to yeah. do is call in 1-855-759-0700 and become a prayer partner with us or a, a monthly partner and we'll send it to you right away. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great month. I feel good about this Christmas. Yeah, I, really I do good. too. I'm praying for less snow. But here's some prayer requests, okay? Yeah. Helen is praying, Billy, who has stage uh, four cancer. We're going to pray for Billy. Mm. And Albert, he wants healing for his mother. Mm -hmm. mm. Great prayer. Yeah, would you do that, Brian? Yes. Lord, I want to thank you for Helen uh, and even her prayer for Billy, who's at stage four cancer. We know that, Lord, uh, you are the great physician and that you are a miracle worker. So we blend our faith together. And we thank you for Billy's life. And we pray, Father, yeah, pray that you would too. also do a great work mm -hmm. in Albert. His mother, he wants her healed. And Lord, we know that you're answering the prayer of a child for his mother. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Psalm 119 says, let me, let me live that I may praise you and may your law sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Great truths. Until next time. God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On tomorrow's show. The couple believes the miracle of their son's life came from God and the power of prayer. You know, nothing is too big for God and He wants the best for us. Uh, it was only God. It was only God.